Hey there, welcome to this video. In my courses, I'm often asked, what is my workflow? Because I use ZBrush quite a bit sort of for lots of different things. Uh, uh, even though I'm, an, I'm primarily an environment artist, I still use it for lots of different things. And my students often ask me, what's my workflow from ZBrush all the way to game art, all the way to say Unity, which is what I'm gonna demonstrate here. So I thought I would show you this in the most simplest basic form possible uh, just to speed this process up because uh, uh, it can take quite a while usually. Um, you know, it's a good half day's work if you're doing something just a regular size. Um, so I'm just doing this block. Um, it's a it's a, like a stone block with a pattern on it and a painting on it just to keep it very very simple. So in this video, I'm just going to do ZBrush to 3D Studio Max and and then into Substance Painter. And then in the next video, I'm going to go from Substance Painter, show you how I painted it up very quickly and then put it into um, uh, Unity from there in HDRP as well. And I'm also going to show you a little problem that a lot of my students have problems with. Um, when they're coming from different packages uh, regarding the baking. When we bake down in Substance Painter, uh, you'll see that it's like this. This is the problem that quite a lot of people encounter and they can't fix it. Uh, but I'm going to uh, show you how to do that in this. And I'm gonna separate that component and make a separate video of that. So a very quick one to two minute video to show you how to do that in a bit more detail. So in, in here, I sort of start off with a polygon model and I just make the basic shape and then dynamash it to add lots of detail which you can see is happening here and um, and I just put a lot of detail on the surface and uh, you know make it interesting to look at just so that we can take that detail through to Unity basically. process there you can see um, of sharpening up the edges I use clay polish for that and I turn up the sharpness and that gives me a really good sharp edge uh, when I do that uh, and then I start using ZV mesh I I'm copy the, the mesh from the Dynamesh cop, make a copy of it I take it down using Z, uh, Z remesher to as far as I possibly can um, <clears throat> optimizing it as far as it will go And once I get it as low as I can take it, I that that becomes my lowest detail basically. And then I um, divide it, I subdivide it many many times, about five times, and take it up. And then I use to take it out to get. So I've got a scale from low poly right up to high detail. Um, and then I use project all using the Dynamesh model, and I project all the information back onto the high uh, definition mesh and the low definition. So from all five subdivisions, the detail gets projected back onto that mesh. And that's really cool actually. And then the low one becomes my low model. And then the highest one I usually take through to become my high model because that's what substance painter needs to bake the normal map, to bake the detail back onto the low version mesh and you can see here I add UV map very basic UV map because a lot of the time when I get it into max I redo it because it doesn't do a particularly great job for games in here so you have to take it into max and you can see that I've done that here I bring in the low version and the high version together and usually the scales not right so I use this to rescale it to the correct um, scale that I'm that I need for the for the particular project that I'm working on, um, and I know you can set up the scale in ZBrush. Um, there is a method for doing it, but it's just as easy to do it here. And if you want to, once you've set it all up and you've adjusted the UVs, you can take it back into ZBrush again and start working on it again if you want to. So it's not a big deal. So 
So here you can see I am readjusting, I'm basically redoing the, uh, the UVs very, very quickly in, in uh, 3D Studio. And this process can work for any modeling packages. It doesn't have, just have to be 3D Studio, uh, Maya, Blender, whatever, it's all the same. So you don't need to put UVs on the high, uh, high poly mesh because you're taking the UVs because you're taking the normals from the actual uh, geometry and then baking that into a map for the low poly model and normal map. I know I could have optimized this object a lot, lot further, uh, but I'm just, this is just a quick example, not an example of what I would do in my day-to-day -day job, I'm just doing it very quickly for this purpose only. So I just want to make that clear before you start commenting on all the polygons and loops that I left behind. It's just an example. So there we go. Once you're happy with your UVs, uh, you bring it into, and you can see the problem there. Bring it into Substance Painter. You can see the problem straight away, but often baking the high detail down fixes it, but you can see here, it doesn't fix it. And I slowed it down here a little bit so that you can see what I'm talking about. And there it is. So to fix that, you have to go back into 3D Studio Max. Like this. And you have to go to the low poly version and add a edit normal modifier to the stack. The normal, because that's just showing you where the normals are on your model. And then down the bottom, reset. Just click it a couple of times. And collapse the stack. Once you've fixed all the normals in 3D Studio Max, you can then re-export it. Again, as an FBX over the old one. You can see it's still there in Substance Paint. And when I bring this in, so I'm renaming the, the, the maps because it was a bad name. Um, so I bring the model back in, the low one. Okay, and then I rebake. It does look a bit weird to start with. Once, you, once you've rebaked it, that all clears up and your problem will be gone. So make sure you point to the high one. Rebake the mesh. Rebake the maps onto the mesh. And there you go, and that's it. So I hope you found that useful. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to texture that very, very quickly in HDRP. And um, then export the maps and bring it into a HDRP project file inside Unity and display in Unity. Very, very simple. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.